All right. The fight of the night was Park and Rodriguez. Uh, the, uh, the performance of the nights went to Caceres and Vittori. They all won $50,000. Obviously, one of the weirder fight weeks that we've ever had uh, in recent memory. Can you give us any insight as to what was happening behind the scenes all week? Yeah, I mean, we, we were <clears throat> trying to keep this fight alive and, and make sure that, that it happened. And we couldn't have done it <clears throat> without a guy like Vittori. Vittori acted like an absolute professional stud, you know. Uh, a, a guy that's uh, incredible to work with this week. That's why this fight happened. What about the flip side with Paulo Costa? I mean, we asked him earlier in the week when he said he couldn't make weight. We said, what happened? He's like, well, I'll tell you guys afterward. Um, sounds like he's not, we're not going to see him tonight. So can you tell us why he was unavailable, to, like why, unable to make weight, I should say? <laughs> no. I mean, <clears throat> your, your, your guess is as good as mine. Um, yeah, we don't know. Came in and, and, and did what he did. But... With that being said, the guy fought his ass off tonight, you know. He didn't, at the end of the first round, I didn't know if he was going to make it to the end of the second round uh, as far as uh, gas, but he fought his ass off tonight. He, he, he showed up and, and fought hard, so. Was there ever a point in time where it was going to be 195 pounds? Because we heard first it was going to be 195, and then we hear, no, now it's 205. So, I mean, were there different agreements along the way? Yeah, I mean, it started at 85, and we worked our way up to 205. <clears throat> Um, but yeah, yeah. And again, you have to give all the credit to Vittori. You know, this guy was willing to fight at any weight and he didn't let any of this stuff mess with his head. And, um, you know, and, and at the end of the day, you know, it's all about the fight. They both fought their ass off. Costa came out and fought. I, I, Costa looked better the fifth round. He did the first round. So, um, he was definitely in shape. You know, when a guy comes in and he's that heavy, you have to question whether he's in shape or not. You know, he was in shape. Yeah, he actually won the fifth round on the cards. So, um, do you have any idea what those guys weighed tonight? Do we know what their fight night weights were? Well, yeah, I, I think Vittori was uh, 208 and uh, Costa was 220. Wow. So, I know you've praised uh, Marvin already, uh, but just get your thoughts. I mean, does that earn him some respect? I mean, like – forever moving forward, I mean, to, to, to deal with all this and then go out and perform, perform like that? Yeah. I mean, the, guy, the guy's an absolute professional. He's a stud, and uh, he's, 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 he's great to work with. Nice. Last thing for me, I just want to ask, uh, so what do you do with Paulo now? I mean, right? I mean, I think a lot of people are saying this guy's future probably lies at light heavyweight. I know you say, as a rule, you don't typically tell people where to fight, but with a situation like this, Will you or the team recommend this guy stay at light heavyweight? Yeah, we absolutely tell you where to fight when this happens, yeah. He's, he's going to have to fight at 205. Yeah. Dana, did you feel like Paulo looked like mentally the pressure was getting to him? I mean, even in the cage, he made the rush at Marvin early on, and, and just it seemed like throughout the fight, you know, and I agree he fought very well, but it seemed like, you know, mentally he, he was uh, being affected somehow. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I thought he was all over the map. I mean, he came in and went after him. Listen, when you talk all the shit and do the things that you did this week, I mean, he jumped into the cage and, and let the, uh, you know, are these all, did, did he do it on purpose? Did he show up? overweight and try to, who knows? I mean, he says he was going to tell you guys after the fight. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I, I can't, but yeah, he did. But was, like I said, I thought he was done. He got stronger as the fight went on. He stayed in there. He continued to, um, he was throwing unbelievable kicks all night. I mean, the kicks to the head, the kicks to the body. Um, and in the fifth round, he came out and tried to win that fight. He came out and tried to finish Vittori. And, and again, <clears throat> more credit to Vittori. He, he took everything that, that Costa had in that fifth round. Did anybody ever show a better chin uh, in, against a puncher like that? We know Pola can punch uh, than Vittori did. I mean, his chin's got to be an all-timer in the UFC. Yeah, great chin. I mean, but both of those guys got hit with big shots tonight and, and both stayed on their feet. Um, Vittori took shins to the head, punches to the head, kicks to the body that were just vicious. It was a hell of a fight. You know, one of, you know, I know you're not big on punishing guys. You know, he fought and he fought well. But, you know, it, does he get away with this, like, 
Scott Free, I mean, you know, because here's the thing, Marvin Vittori is a badass and he was able to deal with it. But a lot of guys might have been ready to fight at middleweight and not able to deal with that. And is it fair if you had Nick Diaz do it last month or two months ago and then now you had uh, Costa do this, um, you know, is it fair to set that precedent and then not, you know, kind of nip it into bud and give Costa some kind of penalty for what he did? Yeah, I don't think that there's a precedent. I think that, you know, he, he's getting fined. 20% of his purse that's going to go to Vittori. And, um, you know, had this thing not worked out the way that it did, he'd have been on a plane to Brazil with no money. You know, he'd, he'd put, put back on a plane, flew back to Brazil, and wouldn't have made a dime on this fight. So, um, you, you know, when you talk about prize fighters that are getting money to actually get in and perform, when they perform, they may, he had to give up 20% of that. So I, I think, you know... That's punishment enough, plus, you know, you guys beat him up pretty good this week, too, and deservedly. Do you, do you feel he was trying to, his actions were intentional, that he was trying to get cut? That's, because that's what I don't know. I, you know, I don't know why he came here and did what he did and acted the way that he acted. Um, like I said to, to John, he was going to tell you guys after the fight. I, I don't know. I honestly don't know the answer to that question. But, um, and, and when you talk about, punishing him. Like I said, he's given up 20% of his purse, and he came in and fought his ass off tonight. If he went in there and put on a horrible performance and, and you know, then, then maybe we could, we could point the finger at him more. He was a nightmare to deal with this week, not just for us, but for you guys too, but he came in and, and performed tonight. Dan, and just to be clear, uh, Paulo did say he would tell us after the fight, but he also told Megan Levy that the only contract he ever saw for this fight was at 205. I'm assuming that's not true. Yeah, that's not true. Yeah. <laughs> Why would we get, give him a contract? for? First of all, let, let's just make this absolutely clear. I hate fights at catchweight. I never make catch. How many catchweight fights have we done in 20 years? I hate them because they mean nothing. Yeah. They're useless. When did you know he was heavy and going to be unable? When did he even say, like, 185 is not happening, so let's work something out? When did that come to your I, desk? This week. I, I don't remember the exact day, but happened when it happened you guys knew it happened i mean as soon as all the stuff started going on i think you guys were in the loop pretty quick so whenever you guys started reporting it seems like it was a month ago <laughs> <laughs> was there a lot of back and forth was there a lot of dealing and like going back and forth was he difficult to deal with or did you could you guys agree to a catch weight fairly quickly or was no it? no of course i mean when a guy comes in that's supposed to fight at 185 pounds and tells us he's not going to make weight you know it's, it's not a good conversation. Yeah. It starts, we're, we're off to a bad start on fight week. What was your relationship like with him before this? Were you guys okay or was there negotiations that didn't go well? Like, what was it like? Yeah, I, I think we've, we've always had a, um, you know, a good relationship with Costa. You know, Costa, if you look at, other than Abu Dhabi, you know, that was a weird, it was a weird deal. But before that, I mean, before Abu Dhabi, that guy was a killer. I mean, that guy would show up and put on performances like tonight. Cool. Thanks. Hey, Dana, quick yeah. question for you. Obviously, a win's a win, but the way that Marvin Vittori got the victory fighting at 205 pounds, does this stock go up any extra in your eyes, and what could that look like? Well, I, Vittori? Vittori. Oh, um, yeah, I mean, listen, Vittori fought at 205 against another guy who's 185 pounds, too. Um, they put on a, a, a good fight tonight. Vittori's stock has always been high. I mean, v Vittori's an absolute stud. You know, the guy's a, a pleasure to work with, and uh, he, he always comes in to fight. Well, assuming that Whitaker fights out of Sonya, and we know that Brunson is going to be fighting uh, Cannoneer, is the winner of Brunson Cannoneer going to be the front runner to face for the, that winner for the middleweight championship? Yeah, that makes sense. I, uh, we saw Alex got Alex Caceres got transported. Is there any update on him? I think it was probably more precautionary. He took the knee to the face. Yeah. I don't know if you guys had heard anything about him. Yeah, Caceres going to uh, the hospital to, to check out his head and face. Yeah. Okay, so probably more just precautionary. Um, I guess the only the only question I have relating to the Paula Costa thing, and I guess it was a lot easier having Marvin willing to jump on board and do this. But at any point in this week did you guys ever consider the fact or 
of just scratching the fight. Grant, I'm glad the fight was on the card because it's a wonderful fight, and it for me made the card. But did it ever get close to the point like you guys thought you would have to scratch that fight? Well, I don't know if we would scratch it. We were trying to keep Vittori in the fight. You know, Vittori was here, did all the right things. He was willing, ready, and able to fight. So we tried to keep that fight. Um, but yeah, I mean, th th there were there were a couple of moments where we thought this fight w wouldn't happen. Now, do you guys go forward? I mean, like everybody seems to be worried about precedent or whether it starts a precedent. Is this something that you start talking with fighters about? Like, guys, this this happened, but this is the kind of stuff that that can't keep happening. Guys, if you look at how mu how many fights we put on a month, <laughs> this this is very rare that these things happen. You know the. The, the, the athletes that, that are in this sport are professional. They show up on weight. You know, we, we have some situations where there's, you know, whatever reason a, a kid couldn't make weight or couldn't do it. But for the most part, when you look at the amount of fights that we put on, this is very rare. The, 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 the thing this week is that it was the main event. So it's very high profile and a lot of weird circumstances this week. 95, then 205, he said, you know, the things that he was saying, and other than that, it's, this, this isn't like some, this isn't like eye poking, you know what I mean? Something that happens a lot and, and is, is a fucking problem. <laughs> hey, Dana, just to clarify one other thing. So if Costa comes back to you and says, hey, I had X, Y, and Z happen, and that's why I had this weight, and I want to fight at 185, would you consider that? Or you said earlier, he's absolutely a 205er now. What, how do you, re you know? He's a light heavyweight. I mean, you guys saw him tonight. He's massive, you know? And, and, and the thing that stood out the most for me is as big as he is, look at the cardio that he had tonight. That was a fucking dogfight. That was a war between two guys who both really wanted to win. And in the fifth round, he came out and went after Vittori. The kicks that he threw to the body, the body shots, the head shots, the head kicks. I mean, he tried to finish the fight in the fifth round. He was in shape. It's not like the guy showed up in, in shape. The guy has lost his mind and, you know, <clears throat> wasn't training for this fight and just showed up and was overweight. He obviously trained. I don't know. He can't make 85. I mean, it just goes to show you that he cannot make 185 pounds. I think he landed at 218 when he got here. He just said to Megan O'Leary, 185 is his division. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be fun. <laughs> I promise you it's not. Um, Dana, I don't mean to belabor it, but when uh, the fight was made at catch weight, was the 20% of his purse already made before then? And, and did he ask for more than 20% to go up to two? Vittori? Yeah. No. No, Vittori was down for whatever the deal was. Whatever the deal was, he's like, I'll fight this guy at any weight. We can fight at heavyweight. Yeah, because it seemed like during the whole process, it seemed like there was really not that much of a question Vittori was going to fight him. Vittori had this thing in his head that, that Paulo Costa did not want to fight him, and he would do anything in his power to make sure that fight didn't happen. That's how Vittori was looking at it. And Vittori, going into this, he was a, a big, uh, you know, uh, uh, he was the favorite at minus 180. Do yeah. you, do you, what do you think of those odds? I think in the beginning, Costa was the favorite. And Vittori was the underdog. Then as all this stuff played out this week, it flipped. Huh? No, that's not true. No? Vittori was uh, minus 125 on Monday. It was minus, okay. Okay. No, I'm wrong then. So then he went up to minus 185 tonight. So yeah. it, it ballooned up. He did open his dog. He did. On Monday it was 185. Boom, Ioli. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Betty MGM anyways, not DraftKings. <laughs> I, I had heard that he was the, the, the underdog uh, at first, and then it flipped, and he was the favorite. So I don't know. I don't know if that's right or wrong. If Kevin's right or whatever. Well, definitely on Monday he was. He right. was, The Tory was favorite. Got it. Would you have thought going into this that he was that big of a favorite? One minus one eighty. Was I what? Would you have, did you think going into this fight that Vittori had that much of an edge to be a minus one eighty? No, I, th I think that you know at that number. You, you got to take Costa. I mean, Costa's just got such heavy hands, and he's so explosive, and he's so dangerous. And uh, other than the, the, the um, you know, the Adesanya fight, I mean, he has a good chin. I mean, that guy's been in there and gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with everybody and, and usually has a good chin. So I, I, I think, you know, if you're a gambler, you'd have to, you'd have to 
lay the money on uh, Costa. For people watching on TV, mm -hmm. you know, how would you explain like being cage side to that of the 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 poundage that Vittori was taking to the body with those kicks? It was insane. I mean, you could tell in that fifth round, Vittori didn't like. It didn't like the kicks that were to the body. And then when the shin started hitting him in the arms, too, because he was blocking them, I, I mean, it, he, yeah, he was, he, he was getting battered in that fifth round. He seemed to just walk through it. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if he seemed to walk through it. He started shooting and trying to take him down and go against the cage. He wasn't as, uh, as excited about standing and striking with him because he was picking him apart the first four rounds. I mean, he had great head movement, um, great counterpunching. Uh, le leading up to the fifth round, the fifth round, Costa just started, was like, I need to knock him out to win this fight. And he went in, he went in that fifth round to try to win. With all the controversy leading up, did you, did you notice the numbers changing that more and more people were being, getting interested in the fight because of, of everything surrounding No, th th this one is on ESPN+. Plus. I don't get the, the up-to-date numbers like I get if it's a pay-per-view or if it was on ESPN for, for you know, for the ratings in a couple of days. It, do, it doesn't really work that way. But it had to have. I mean, I'm sure you guys were. I was excited as they were walking out and getting into the octagon. I was excited for that fight. And, you know, all the bullshit that happened this week, you know, gets people even more fired up. That might have been the best atmosphere we've had in the Apex yet. What's that? That might have been the best atmosphere tonight in the Apex. I, I agree. And I said it's got to be the... The, the the most packed I've ever seen it, and people were yelling and booing, and it, yeah, it was it was uh, it was it was good. It was fun. It was it was a fun day. That it? Yep. One here. Uh, Anaheim is now official. Uh, how important is for you to go back to California now? What's the question? Yeah. Um, yeah, we're excited. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know what else to say. Yeah, it'll be good. It'll be good to get back there and 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 uh, and put on an event in Southern Cal. And uh, now that uh, you have an announcement for ne next year, how how is it looking now to have international events again, not only Abu Dhabi? Yeah, um, I don't know. I don't know how that's gonna how that's gonna play out. I mean, like I like I say every time I talk to you guys every week, it's it's I, I don't know. All this stuff is up and down. Week to week, you know, um, we'll see. But I, I, we were just having a conversation at the office yesterday. I, I can't wait to, st like I said, I tell you guys all the time, if you don't think that I don't, you know, the, the, the contender starts at 5 o'clock. At 5.03, I leave my office and come over here and watch some great fights and then go home and have dinner. And, you know, tonight we got to see uh, Costa versus Vittori here. I mean, this is the equivalent of sitting home in your underwear, you know, and doing a Zoom call for work. It, it, it's awesome. It's nice and it's great. But this can't happen. This can't keep happening. For We got to get back out on the road. We, we got to start going to places like, you know, Oklahoma and, you know, all these other small towns that we do fight nights in. We eventually have to get back to work. So um, I'm looking forward to it sooner than later. Just finally, for me, uh, what do you think about uh, Nate's uh, callout uh, for Tony Ferguson? Do you like that fight? And what's his uh, seat contract situation on, on Nate? Is this, this is his last fight? Yeah, he's got he's got one more fight. We're working on a fight for him. Um, Tony wasn't one of the guys we were working on, but we're working on a fight for for Nate now. He's got one fight left. Good. Have a great day, you guys.